you come to uh, L.A., did, but did you um, did you get your first break in the film, TV composition thing, or in a rock band? I don't really uh, know what was a break exactly because yeah. everything kept breaking. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. so broke. So you were, that was a big thing. You were I was so, broke. so freaking broke. Yeah. So um, when I started getting to know more people out in L.A., I would go to parties and barbecues and people that I would speak to were, you know, some were directing like Corman movies or even more independent films than those movies. And those are we're talking C level movies, not B level. Yeah. Some of them B movies. And you hadn't done any composing like in Chicago for no, movies? No. no. So they, 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 uh, you know, I, I got offers to do movies and I, I told everyone, I'm like, I've never done this. So, um, I, I'm into it. I'll do my best. And it was either that or painting houses, you know, cause I, I would do demos for people like for a hundred bucks, I'd, you know, write all the music and record somebody cause I needed to eat, you know. Did you paint houses at one point? Oh yeah. See, I knew it. Yeah. You did. You weren't joking. I did. I painted Nicolas Cage's house twice. Whoa. Look uh, where that got you. He doesn't, I don't even know him. <laughs> 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 but you know what? That's how I found the neighborhood I now live in. I can't even believe it. Like did I don't you remember, live in that neighborhood. He did. <laughs> He did. I couldn't believe it. Like I, I was, I was, I don't even want to say what I got paid, but it wasn't, it wasn't a lot. <laughs> so I remember coming home one day and telling my wife, you know, we were living in an apartment. I'm like, damn, I was painting this house today. That neighborhood is just so awesome. I would love to live there because it feels so good. And yeah, I mean, it's a nice no, place, nice. but it's so, you know, there's just something really uh, natural and calming about it for me. So it's just very strange that uh, years later we wound up there. You know what? I, I don't need to interrupt you, but man, the thing that the thing that, and this is what I love about you, is like, yeah, you're talented and, and all this stuff, but you have this deep insight and wisdom, like to make that decision when you were in Chicago. It wasn't that you just came out of here; it was why you did it, and you were already this. You, you were gifted with this deep insight and understanding of life in general, which then you know helps you. <laughs> with everything you do, you know, it's really a gift. I mean, it really is. And I, and I, I am that person that, that likes to go deep. And so I'm, I'm impressed. It's very, it's really cool, man. Well, I've said it into my uh, Saturn return, right? You know, I'm not that deep into astrology, but anyway, it was just another thing, you know, another yeah. milestone for me to just make a decision and get my, myself to be somewhere else. I, I knew that if I waited into my thirties, that that would probably uh, diminish my my chances of uh, of achieving some version of what I was right. aspiring to. When I moved to LA, I really wanted to write with and produce artists. That that's really wanted to do what I wanted to do. Of course, every day, every day or two, when I brush my teeth, no, but every every morning, you know, when I brush my teeth, it's like I still see a guitarist, you know, and I've scored over a hundred movies and a bunch of. I mean, it's hard even fathom it now but yeah it's been a long journey but i uh met this this girl lisa papineau and we ended up forming the band pet and that was an interesting um collaboration we we ended up signing a deal with atlantic records and got involved with tori amos and all this stuff but um we uh she she definitely turned me on to different perspectives about art and music that has been very helpful to me over the years uh the band was pretty joyless we were a really good band but we were kind of like watching a car wreck or something you know it was not always a pleasant experience you know <laughs> but on uh, stage you could, you could witness this yeah, well yes you could, absolutely could um <laughs> I would have paid for that. <laughs> it was it was an intense band. I mean, we, it, but I, I am proud of what we did do uh, at the time. A funny thing that was happening is, so I, I was living in that apartment that I mentioned earlier when I was painting houses between my movies, and my band had, Pet had gotten a song on the Crow Two soundtrack, which I think pretty much every band was on that soundtrack. There, yeah. There's 17 bands on it, and I've since worked with a number of the people yeah. from those bands, which is even more yeah. weird. So one day I'm sitting in my, I'm working in my second bedroom studio on, um, on, I, I forget which movie it was. It's probably something that we shouldn't really remember anyway, but I keep hearing the song, like the song from the soundtrack. Now the soundtrack was, had just come out and I wasn't even paying attention to that. And our record had not come out yet. And every time I stop my music, I'm like, what the hell? I keep hearing my band. I'm like, this is the craziest thing. So. 
So I go out downstairs, go out the back, and I hear it coming out of a house behind my apartment. I didn't know who lived there. So I figured, okay, I got a promo copy of my album. I'm going to walk around the corner of the street and I'm going to give it to whoever's playing the music because I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. So I knock on the door and this kid's like 14 years old. He answers the door. He says, I'm sorry, is the music too loud? And I'm like, no, but you keep playing my band over and over and <laughs> over again, like for an hour, right? So I gave him the promo copy of our album and he just looked at me and he's just like, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, right. in my life. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of interesting. I, I probably have, you know, hundreds of stories like that, that where I'm in that position. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. interesting the people, I mean, look, we're sitting here, you yeah. know, um, it, it, my life is, is kind of a, a very interesting, uh, amalgam of, of one experience leads to the next and this relationship ends up complementing the other one. I mean, the, um, I think we'd need to be talking for about 50 hours for me to give you like the real details oh, on, on yeah, how, yeah. how, you know, each decade went, but, uh, it's been with every success, there's been a steep stumble. Like my first few studio movies, like, oh man, I got a $50 million Stallone movie. It opens at $6.8 million. And it's like, okay, now I've got that on my resume and I have to overcome that yeah. and get another studio movie. Yeah. And I remember uh, that happened again on what's the worst that could happen. I'm thinking, well, don't name your movie. Don't name your movie happen. that. <laughs> Talk so, about putting it out in the universe. 